we're given a differential equation as well as an initial condition for a particular solution and then we're asked to reason about that particular solution using L'Hopital's rule, using the Euler approximation, and finally solving explicitly for the exact solution. So here are the sorts of things that are going to prove useful. In part A, we're asked to find the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x plus 1 over sine of x. Now notice, we don't know f of x, except at a particular point, which is the point in question. And so we can see that L'Hopital's rule will apply. So I'm just going to write that out. We can use use L'Hopital's rule because its conditions are met, namely the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x plus 1 equals uh, negative 1 plus 1, which is 0, and similarly for the denominator, the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x uh, equals 0. So, applying L'Hopital's rule, we can say that the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x plus 1 over sine of x is the same as the limit as x approaches 0 of f prime of x over cosine of x. Now, f prime of x we know, we can plug in uh, 0 for x and negative 1 for y. We get to negative 1 squared is 1. I'll say negative 1 squared times 2 times 0 plus 2. All over the cosine of 0 is 1. And so that's 2. That's our application. Okay, now let's try the Euler's approximation. Okay, we're working in two equal steps as we try to approximate f of one-half starting at f of zero, f of zero being the point that we know. So we say we first try to find f of a quarter. f of a quarter we're going to approximate as f at zero plus f prime at zero times the distance between zero and a quarter, which of course is just a quarter. Now what do we know about f prime of 0? Well, we just calculated that in the last problem. That's 2. And so f of a quarter is approximately equal to, what was f of 0? Uh, f of 0 was negative 1. So negative 1 plus a half equals negative a half. Okay, so now we take the next step. Moving over by one quarter step, we can say that f of a half is approximately equal to the approximation that we got for f of a quarter, just the approximation, plus f prime at uh, x equals a quarter. times the distance away, one quarter. And again, at x equals a quarter, we also have uh, y equals, what was that? Well, it's the number we just got, negative a half. And so now we have to plug in one quarter comma negative a half into our definition of f prime. So one quarter is going to give a half here plus two That'll be five halves. And then our y approximation is negative a half. Negative a half squared is a quarter. So what have I got? I've got negative a half plus 
f prime of a quarter we just said was uh, negative one half squared times two times one quarter plus two. And then that whole thing has to be multiplied by a quarter. Uh, putting all of that together, we're going to get negative 11 30 seconds. In part C, we're going to be using separation of variables to solve. So I'll just partition off this remaining part of the space and to apply the separation of variables method, which I've got outlined here. So we're going to say dy dx equals y squared times 2x plus 2. We separate the factors. We get dy over y squared. All of the dy and y related factors are on the left now. And then we have 2x plus 2 dx. So the uh, dx and x related factors are on the right. We're going to integrate both sides. We'll get negative y to the negative 1 equals 2x squared over 2, which is x squared, plus 2x plus c, where I've consolidated the c from this side over into this unknown value. I'm going to move the negative sign to the other side, so I've got 1 over y equals negative x squared minus 2x, but I don't need to negate the c because we just changed the meaning of the c. It's still simply a way of incorporating what it is that we don't know about the problem. Let's solve for y. And in this case we do that just by inverting it. y equals 1 over negative x squared minus 2x plus c. I suppose we should rewrite this as, maybe to be clearer, Maybe we could write it as negative 1 over x squared plus 2x plus c. And again, I don't mind the fact that the value of c keeps changing in these manipulations because I haven't yet used the initial condition. Well, now we're going to use the initial condition. What we know is y of 0 is negative 1. So I've got y of 0 equals negative 1. <clears throat> But that has to, in turn, equal negative 1 over 0 plus 0 plus c. So c equals 1. And I can write my final solution. f of x equals negative 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 1.